Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at the Blue Note. Tonight, saxophonist and band leader Odin Pope is playing with a saxophone choir featuring the legendary James Carter. Tonight we're going to talk about his latest CD, Universal Sounds, which is really a continuation and an exploration of free jazz. Also, we talk about his 30-year battle with bipolar and manic depression. <laughs> Sounds. This is your brand new Porter Records release, and this record really takes me back to really the free jazz records of the 1960s and early 70s. Well, you know, uh, this particular this particular cut was featuring some of the greatest musical minds that this country has produced: Marsha Allen. Lee Smith, who is one of the true g giants on the bass, Craig MacGyver, uh, also uh, Warren Smith. You know, like you, you can't get you can't get no better than that. That's I was I was blessed. Jim Hamilton on drums. I was blessed to have these great musical minds do this CD with me, and I'm just so grateful that that I was able to pull it together. What influenced you or inspired you to record these songs? Because, I mean, there are some stellar tracks on here where you are blowing your behind off. Well, you know, I'm always inspired through, like, certain things, things that happen in my life. For example, like, like Marsha, for an example, like being able to perform with Marsha Allen for the first time. Was, was a great inspiration. Marsha Allen is one of the great forerunners of what we do. And then, of course, you had one, 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 the, the, one of the great drummers. So I think just having these two individuals like on the scene inspired not only me, but Lee, Craig, and Jim Hamilton inspired all of us because they've been around and performed and, and recorded and shared bandstands with so many great musical minds. So I think just having those two musical minds on the scene inspired all of us. I think two of the standout tracks is one, Binder, and Blues. They're just, you're all over the place on this album. Well, again, uh, with having having one on drums and timpanis, it just gave me so much flexibility and so much so much room to stretch because he he gives you so much space, you know. Like he just he when he opens up, he just give you, you know, like you you. He's very flexible and he makes everybody else very comfortable around. So now I think with that, just having him on the scene made everybody really t go to another level. So. <laughs> Thank 
kept in the closet for many many years uh, uh an illness that you just recently went out and just told your music fans uh you've suffered almost 30 years of bipolar and um what was it like and why now in 2011 you decided just let everybody know that this is not a problem and that everyone deals with some kind of form of depression well i think First of all and foremost, I think it's helpful for me to come out primarily because it can help so many other people because so many other people, 10% of the population of people, they are suffering with this in silence and there's no reason to be ashamed, there's no reason to be ashamed of bipolar disorder because it's, it's a sickness like diabetes, high cholesterol, high blood pressure. It's nothing really to be ashamed of because with the proper diagnosis and the proper medication, it can be controlled. And for those of you who are out there might be in that same arena, just remember they are, there's help and it can be controlled with the proper diagnosis and the proper medication. You just had a fundraiser uh, in Philadelphia with some of your very good friends. Tell me about what the situation was like, because this was pretty much the first time that you came out and played in quite a long time. It was very inspiring, and it was it was so great to see how many people. I mean, the place was it was like, I mean, you couldn't move. It was so many people, and for me, it was it was a wonderful feeling to to realize. And I had people. So many people came came in from New York City. Uh, from parts of other parts of, of the world. And it was like very re rewarding at the same time. I was so grateful that so many people came out to, to support me. And it, it turned out to be very good. It seems like tonight here with the saxophone choir that you're playing a lot better and actually a little stronger. Do you think that your time away because you were battling and dealing with your illness, has made you kind of regroup and kind of made you a little stronger? I think in a sense, I like to feel as though, because this is the best I've felt in many years. You know, I think, actually, I think it is. I think it is uh, because I, I feel very positive. I feel very strong about, you know, things that I'm doing now. And I have a different point of view and I'm looking at things head on. <laughs> saxophone choir is a, a labor of love for you and uh, tonight you have the legendary James Carter what is it about 
the saxophone choir that you keep coming to and keep keep this going? The saxophone choir is part of the very uh, basic fundamentals of what I do. It's it's uh, uh, when I first started out, even before before I played the instrument, it was I was singing and speaking and doing a lot of things in the church. So this is like part of my voice, you know, the voice that I did many many years ago and part of the voice that I heard many, many years ago, uh, having nine saxophones recapture that early part of my life, you know, and having nine saxophones really speak out on that. It, it, it gives me, it gives me a lot of, uh, it gives me a lot of strength. It also tells me that uh, this is a part of what I do, and it's a part of what I like to do. And also, it's a part of what a lot of other people like to do. It, it brings a lot to the table. I know last year you had Joe Lovano, and this year is James Carter. Why is it that you have Grammy Award winning and internationally known saxophonists that like to participate and perform with the saxophone choir? Well, these particular people are people that that I have a tremendous amount of respect for. And, you know, like I've known them for, for a while and we talked and we collaborated and they just like to be a part of it. How do you go about choosing the material for the saxophone choir? Well, what I usually do, I usually write and uh, I write, I might write uh, for about maybe a couple of measures today, I might write a couple of measures the next day. I write uh, periodically, and then I compile and put all the, the 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 ideas and concepts together. In other words, when I get inspired, if it's four o'clock in the morning, I get up and write that idea down. If I get inspired two o'clock in the afternoon, I write that idea down. So inspiration comes from all sources. So when the inspiration comes, I write the ideal down and then I compile it and put it all together. So the next phase of this is pretty much the chamber and the orchestral part. Yes, you know, uh, what you do, you, uh, what I do, I usually write, it's hard for me to just to sit down and write. I have, you know, it has to be some kind of inspiration. I have to be inspired or some kind of ideal or something comes comes to me for me to, to, to write. It's just very difficult for me to just to sit down and just write. It's always some kind of inspiration there. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at the Blue Note here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Odin Pope for his time, as well as the staff and management here at the Blue Note. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace. Oh.